how to choose the correct camera for your computer vision applications and projects. And this video here, we're going to explore some different options. I'm going to talk about different camera types, different types of images, but also just what are the pros and cons of using different cameras? What camera should you use for specific use cases and so on? So that's what we're going to dive into. We also have this as a blog post where you can go in and see more examples, read about all details and so on, but we're going to cover all the different types in this video. So first of all, when we want to go in and find the correct camera, we need to take into account the use case, but also the problem that we're trying to solve. Can we solve this with just a standard camera? How does it work? Do we need a video camera? How many frames per seconds do we need to act like have the camera? What is the image resolution and so on? So all these things are something that we need to take into account when we have to figure out what camera to use in our computer vision applications and projects. In most cases, you're good to go with just like an RGB camera you don't really need like that high image resolution if you're using if you're testing out your computer vision models from autolytics the yolo models they downscale all the images to 640 by 640 so it's actually going to downscale your image so you don't need like 2k 4k even full hd images for most use cases you can basically just test it out on your own does it work does it solve your problem on 640 you can maybe go to another image resolution which is higher as well and then use that information to determine what camera to use but in most cases you can get away with just a standard camera video camera and so on it could be cctv cameras if you want to do monitoring some security systems and all that could also be that you want to use it in industrial sectors for like inspections, monitoring and so on, where you need like a specific camera. Could be that you have some environment constraints, could be heat, cold environments, could be all different types of examples or like cases that you need to take into account when you determine a camera. It can be all the way from a standard camera, webcam, CCTV camera, just a video stream, machine vision, like act like machine industrial cameras. So we have RGB, image very common for computer vision we just have a channel for the different colors so we have a red channel green channel and a blue channel so we have three channels and this is also what we're using as default with the autolytics models but there's tons of different types of images as well that we can do update detection on top of could for example also be depth of images infrared and thermal images different types of cameras like high speed low speed cameras and so on but it's also very good to use rgbd because in most applications or at least in a lot of applications just to the information is not enough you can do some if you have some references you can do some estimates for for example like the depth you can also do estimates for length could be that you want to measure something but then we need references in the act like frame so this can be used with a depth channel as well so an rgb d camera that also gets the depth information so there's different ways to capture that here we see like a very nice example of a virtual try on that could require like an rgbd camera that also get the depth information to overlay the clothing could be sunglasses shoes different type of clothes that you want to try on so one way to get that is stereo imaging you have two cameras and then you just see how are the pixels likely changing from one camera to the other and then we can estimate the depth based on that. That's pretty much like how the human eyes work as well. So if you just take like one hand in front of one eye, it's way harder to actually like determine the depth in compared to like if you have two eyes looking. We don't get the exact depth values, but we actually like have some understanding of depth in the image by using two images. So this can be for stereo imaging. You can do some math and actually like get very high accuracy depending on your camera setup, but you can get centimeter accuracy with stereo imaging. So this is also more than enough for most computer vision applications and projects. Another one is time of flight camera. So we actually like have a signal that we sent out. It hits the target and it gets reflected back again. Then we measure the time it takes to send the signal, get it back again, and then we can measure the distance to that object so this is also a very nice one often used as well again it's pretty much the same as lighter as well we just actively send something out if you use a stereo camera that's a passive sensor it's not doing anything it just looks at differences from one camera to the other so we can also use infrared and thermal cameras for heat detection for example could be smoke could be like industrial sector and so on where you have some different processes going on in your in your line that you probably don't want to have like fires going on it could be that you want to detect different stuff anomalies in heat could be that you want to have a specific 
uh, temperature in your process and then if it exceeds a threshold or if it drops below a threshold you can trigger some system you can have optic detection models running on top of them so we can feed these thermal images train the ultralytics models on top of that as well so this is really good in a lot of industrial applications and also when we want to choose a camera slow and high-speed camera is also a very important factor especially if you want to do something custom if you have something that goes really fast it's hard to capture with just 30 frames per second let's for example take and we want to do some analysis on a golf swing could also be that you have a manufacturing production line where you just have like items like flying through very fast on a conveyor belt or whatever then 30 frames might not be enough let's say that you want to do inspection of like bottles could be you want to check date on different bottles or products running on a production line then it might actually go too far so your images will get blurred if you only use 30 frames per second then you might have to go up to 60 frames per second 120 frames per second depending on how fast it moves to reduce this blurriness and then you can actually have 120 frames per second just running as fast as possible you won't get the blurred out dates and then you can use computer vision to detect the date do the inspection verification and so on of your product so this is also very important to take into account but a lot of computer vision applications can be solved with just a standard camera. Sometimes people over-engineer it, think they need like a machine vision camera for everything. They're very expensive as, as well. So definitely only use those cameras if you really need them for your specific application and projects. But yeah, a golf swing, for example, it goes very fast. Like we're talking like probably 200 milliseconds or something like that. Could also be a tennis swing or other types of sports analytics where you want to do some very high level detailed analysis we don't really get enough information in 30 frames per second if you only have like 200 milliseconds um, where we actually performed action tennis swing tennis serve golf swing or whatever or in a manufacturing line then we only have like 200 200 milliseconds we have 30 frames per second that's probably only like that's just round it up and say then we have 10 frames or even less than 10 frames, like seven, eight, 10 frames that we can go in and do analysis on top of. And again, that's not really a lot of information. If you want to anal do analysis of a golf swing, for example, the key point if you want to apply post animation and so on on top of that. We also have another even more high level, go even more into detail with multispectral imaging. So instead we just have the wavelength for the RGB images, which we can see with the human eye as well. Then there's tons of other wavelengths that we can capture with cameras, and this is multispectral imaging. So it just covers a way wider band in the in the spectral in the spectral wavelengths, and then you can cover way more details. So if you, for example, do quality insurance of different products, could be potatoes, could be different types of fruits like apples and so on, you can see you can actually like gonna do the inspections with the human eye because you just can't see the defects on the products, the apples, the potatoes and so on, only like these cameras. And if you just search up multispectral imaging comparisons, like you can see a very huge difference. So definitely make sure that you know that these things are actually like possible. It's very detailed, you need to research it way more and so on, but it's very important when you choose your camera to know about all these different types of images cameras don't try to over engineer it like because if you don't know exactly what you need you might not even need it so just go with the standard solution and then you can always like upgrade your your gear because some of the cameras like they are very expensive if we start to get into like high-speed cameras machine vision cameras and also these multispectral imaging techniques lighter cameras for getting depth information and so on is starting to become cheaper stereo vision is pretty pretty cheap as well there are some very good rgbd cameras as well which are like lower cost so you can start out with that and then if you want to do something more hardcore you can always upgrade it if you don't know exactly what you need you probably just need a very basic camera that solves it most of the stuff is actually like in the model in the data that we feed into the model so spend more time on focusing on the data set getting the best quality data as possible and then train various different types of models evaluate them against each other and then basically just have this whole evaluation loop we need to have feedback we need to evaluate how our model performing we can test out a few cameras but again we need to know what's available what to use in different examples and that's what we went through in this video let us know in the comments if you have some pretty cool use cases for some of the cool ones with multispectral imaging infrared thermal and so on you can just feed those into the ultralytics model as well or another deep learning model stay tuned for upcoming videos you can check out the whole computer vision pipeline 
how to train your models, data set, everything is covered on this YouTube channel. Check it out, and then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.